So here it is, boys and girls. It actually was quite a bit bigger than I uh, thought when I pulled it out of the water at first. I'd say it's a good 45, 50 pounds. Hefty, hefty. Look at the size of that tail. That'll make a wallet. And we're gonna have plenty of meat. The great thing about this is it came out of the clearest water around here. Nice, very clean brook. So I'm rather excited to have that. Get some meat in the freezer. Hey guys, welcome to Wild Maine. In this episode, we're gonna talk about making some beaver burger because, well, I've been craving beaver burger a lot lately. So what you're gonna need, beaver meat, obviously. So I trapped a beaver yesterday, uh, got it all on video. It's either gonna be before this video or after. Haven't decided yet. Um, just kind of throwing everything onto the computer and figuring it out from there. Anyway, get yourself some good beaver meat. Uh, when I butcher a beaver, I like to make sure that all of the fat is off of the meat because it has a little bit of a different flavor that might not be appealing to everybody. So I take care of that by getting rid of all the fat and silver skin that I can. So this bag here is just completely lean beaver meat. Uh, the majority of it is going to come from the back straps and from the rear quarters. Next, we're going to get some beef suet. You can use really any kind of fat. Um, I'm using beef suet because it has a better flavor and a really good texture. So, I mean, it really just depends on what you prefer. Uh, I recommend going with the suet. Uh, also got a pound and a half here for $3. You really can't beat it. The third thing that I'm going to throw into this burger is bacon because, well, bacon makes everything better. So I went and got a big package of some bacon ends. It's a lot cheaper than getting, you know, regular sliced bacon. All tastes the same. We're going to be cutting this up and grinding it up anyway. So why not go with the ends? Uh, got a little over two pounds here for $8. Not going to use that all for this. I use it in many other things for cooking. So it's gonna have plenty of uses but I want to use some in this burger so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this beaver meat that's been sitting in the fridge overnight we're gonna get a big old tray we're gonna dump the meat into there we're gonna spread it out pretty even Get a good even layer of meat going on there. That's about two inches thick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let that sit in the freezer for one to two hours. The goal here is to get the meat firmed up just a little bit. It'll make it a lot easier to cut. You don't have to, but I highly recommend it. All three of these things, as cold as they can be, you know, firm them up a bit, it'll make it a lot easier to cut. So step one, get your beaver meat that you butchered up, However you attained it, if you got it given to you, whatever it is, get it into a tray, stick it into the freezer for an hour to two hours, you'll thank me for that. Then we'll move on to step two. Okay, step two. Take your bacon. I've already done this, so I'm not going to do it now, but I'm going to tell you what it is. Take your bacon and do the same thing you did to your beaver. Uh, I let this sit overnight and I'm actually letting it thaw a bit before I cut it. But you can do the same thing you're doing with the beaver meat. Take it, get it in a good even layer. The thinner the layer, the quicker it's going to work for you. Uh, take the bacon, put it on a sheet, throw it in your freezer as well. Bacon is a, <clears throat> excuse me. Bacon is especially important to get a little bit frozen because you really want to get it cut up well. Otherwise, it's going to mess up with your grinder. Been there, done that. If you run full bacon through your grinder, it's going to gum it all up. It's not fun. You're gonna spend more time cleaning the grinder out than you are actually grinding the meat. So get it a little bit frozen so it's easy to cut. You're gonna get it good and chunked up. We'll get to that in a bit. Okay, so for your third ingredient, the suet, um, this is really gonna come down to what kind of fat you're using. They're not all the same, so they're gonna have different qualities. Fat is fat, yes, but they're all a bit different in their own. With the suet, 
as long as it's really cold, it, stand, it tends to stay pretty firm. So this, just keep in the fridge until you're ready to use it. I've already uh, gone ahead and diced some of it up. It works really well just doing it straight out of the fridge. As long as it's cold, it's firm, it's easy to slice, it's like butter. Uh, literally just like cutting a stick of butter. You got a sharp knife, it slides right through it. Um, you're going to have no issues with that. So no need to throw it into the freezer necessarily like the other two things. But put it in the fridge, keep it cold until you're ready to use it. And then you're going to just start dicing it up. Um, just like everything else we're going to be putting the, uh, into the burger here. We're going to be dicing it up. But just a heads up, keep your suet in the fridge, keep that cold. Um, we'll wait a little while and then we're going to start putting everything together. Get ready to grind it all up. It's been about an hour or so. Got some good firmness to the meat now, but it's not completely frozen. So we're going to take it, if we can, pull pieces out, and we're going to cut it into little chunks. You really don't want them any bigger than an inch. And you're going to try to keep that standard across all of the things that you're mixing in. You know, three quarters of an inch to an inch should be plenty. You're just making it easy to mix everything together and then easier for the grinder when you put everything together as well. So you're going to get all this chopped up. Obviously, you can do bigger pieces, multiple pieces at once. I was just using that as an example. But we're going to get those, throw them into a bowl. I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of that all cut up. And then we're going to move on to the next one. All right, so got the beaver meat all diced up. Looking real nice. Hopefully that's in the camera view. I uh, did not say earlier, but I will let you know now. I have about, give or take, an ounce or two, about four and a half pounds of beaver meat there. And the goal is to go for an 80-20 split. So when I say 80-20 split, we're going to have 80% beaver, 20% suet, and bacon. I'm going to take that other 20% and I'm going to split it evenly, 10%, 10% uh, between the, uh, the suet and the bacon. So with four and a half pounds, we're going to have just over a pound of suet and just over a pound of, just kidding, math is all wrong in my head. Uh, just over half a pound of suet and just over half a pound of bacon uh, And that will give us an 80% ratio of bacon to the fattier meats but uh, We got the the beaver all cut up and now we're gonna move on to the bacon And then after that we're gonna do the exact same thing to the suet So that way we have them all in chunks and then we'll mix them together and uh, take it from there Now for the bacon, I've got a scale here. Like I said, we're gonna do about oh, a little bit over half a pound. See, this is cutting very nicely because it's still partially frozen. Not completely though. If it's completely warmed up, it's nearly impossible to cut, but we're dicing it up real well. And we're going to keep doing this until we get over half a pound. And I'm going to do about 10 ounces, so it gives me a little bit more than half a pound. Um, this isn't 100% fat anyway, so it's not like it's going to be too much on the fat side as far as percentages go. But this slab bacon is really good stuff. You know, you got some thicker chunks in there. Good mix of everything.
But like I said, we're just gonna keep cutting this, dicing it, uh, three quarter inch to one inch chunks. Less is not gonna hurt at all. It's when things get a little bit bigger that it makes things a little more difficult on the grinder. So we'll finish this up and then we'll move on to the, the suet. Now we're gonna bust out the suet, do the same thing for that. Again, just nice small cubes of it. As long as you've kept it cold, it'll cut like butter. In fact, it's probably the easiest thing to cut out of all three of the meat products. We're going to get about 10 ounces of that, just like the bacon. And then it'll be time to mix it all together. Once everything is diced up and measured to whatever way you want to do it, you don't have to go, you know, with the percentages that I've gone, but it's what I personally like to do. Uh, you're going to take it and it's time to mix it all together. Get yourself a good sized bowl. You take the beaver meat. Dump all that in there. Got our bacon. In she goes. The suet. Also in she goes. And then it's time to mix it. Best way to do it is with your hands. So you're just going to turn it all together. Get a good mix. Man, wouldn't you love doing this when you were a kid? Less dishes you have to do, too. But you're going to get a good even mix. Make sure the, the fattier pieces are all mixed in with the nice lean beaver meat. That way when you grind it up, it's all about the same consistency. You don't want some of it, or good chunks of it, to be all fat, and some of it to be all meat. You want it as evenly mixed as possible. And if you've done this right, your hands are going to get pretty cold in the process. My fingers are already starting to go a little numb. And then you should be left with something like that. That there is ready to go into the, the grinder. Just one more look at the beautiful mixture we got going there. Looks so good you could eat it just like that. And now we grind. There we have our beaver bacon burger. All that's left to do is to package it up, freeze some, and try the rest.
So there we have it guys, our beaver bacon burger with uh, Swiss cheese, freshly cut, some nice uh, baby bella mushrooms, thin sliced, lettuce, and tomato. Nothing fancy about it. Bon appetit. Good stuff.